Okay, so this brief video is about making rivers, if you would like to do something along those lines inside of Gaia. So what I've got here is a river example, but there's two different uh, versions going on here. I've got a simplified version and a, um, a slightly more advanced version that does more accuracy to the terrain shape. So the simple one is pretty straightforward. You could just take a fault and you invert it and then you just subtract it from the terrain, right? You can just take that and straight up subtract that and you have a line. And if you wanted, you could use something like stacks. And then stacks, of course, will go ahead and uh, take that terrain and, you know, duplicate it and kind of displace and combine. And the end result is this varied kind of looking kind of cut in there. You've got these little island sections that sometimes happen. So that's kind of cool. Alternatively, you can take that and kind of, kind of blur it, and then you can use this uh, height. I'm getting the max and min here. So my blur is a small amount, it's 0.71, so it's not too like it normally is when I reduce that. And um, I've taken my lands, applied a gradient, just added it to it. Uh, not fully, just use the default 50% here, that's enough. You can make it steeper if you want, it's up to you. But I use that so that I have a bit of a, a, a hill to work with. And then using Snowfall and the Snowfall input with this um, area of emission, so around that region, it ensures that it then starts to generate snow around that area. Now I've altered some things, duration, intensity, as well as the terrain scale and verticality, just by turning off real scale, that will make sure that it will smooth off that region. So it's not quite flat, but it is definitely removed a lot of the actual details that are there. So you can see how that's occurred. I then go ahead and um, in this particular case, I'm just pulling off the mask and um, the snowfall mask typically has sort of like a gray region and a white region. So I'm just using the height to eliminate that so that it just gets to the, the actual area where the snow is being applied. <clears throat> and then I'm just doing some messing around. So a little bit of blur and then combining it back with itself so that I get a sharp edge with a little bit of a soft border. And I'm just applying a constant, which I measured carefully to match up with this train. No big deal. And so it's going in and it's doing that. I found that a little bit too soft. So I added the little bit of the sharp edge. There you have it with the displace. So it's just giving me a bit more detail around that edge. So not absolutely necessary. And it's also not absolutely necessary to make this completely flat. I'll show you a different method of doing this in the next one. So um, if you want it to be absolutely flat, that's what you would need. <clears throat> this is basically another way of creating things like lakes as well. You could do the same kind of process. And <clears throat> I'm subtracting a version of the that mask using the height here just to kind of carve into it. And then another version of this, which I've gone ahead and sharpened it with Aperture using Contract. And then just subtracting both of them, I get a mixture of sort of like a very even border in this. And then I could go in if I wanted, again, using the mask and I could displace that if I wanted or do other things to it. But that's the general you know, principle. So you can apply any one of those ideas in there. Now, alternatively, let's get rid of these, move them out of the way so they're less confusing. We have this other method. So you can start, <clears throat> you could uh, stop that process at any point in time. It's all fairly easy. This one, it kind of has to go continuously through. You really have to kind of do all these steps in order for it to work. And you're a little bit more um, babysitting the result in order to make sure that you get the best possible quality. But again, it's going to be a little bit more accurate to the shape of your terrain. So once again, just like before, you're taking your terrain and you're adding a bit of a gradient to it so that you get a slope. I take that slope and I go ahead and my first thing was to do a mask. I started with just picking a point of origin. So I went ahead and put in a big blob there, which is where I wanted it to start from. And then I let it run. And then each time I let it run, 
um, I saw stuff that I wasn't quite happy with. And so I played with it by going back to the mask and adding a little bit more here. I noticed it faded off a little bit too much towards the end. And I could probably adjust that by maybe increasing the angle of the train, uh, just adding a little bit more of the gradient into it so that it was a bit stronger. But all the same, um, I went ahead and I just added a bit more of my, my painting into regions where I wanted things to happen. So I added these ones in order to create more branching at this point. So I got this big one that kind of came down and, you know, got to say roughly about here, somewhere around there, it stopped. And so I started adding little dots and whatnot in through there and I started creating little branches and little arches that kind of, you know, built it out. So you can see this in the final result, right? It was going down and going this way. I added these ones here to create this little branch that kind of comes back in and meets up with itself, which is again, something that you see in river sometimes. And then around the bottom, just when it was starting to peter out, I just started adding a bit more to the mask, a bit more to the mask, until it really started to carve in and work with that area. Now, when erosion happens, it produces your wear, your deposit, your flow. And I just took those and I added them together and added them together. So I had all three and I got everything kind of in there. And then using a height and the min-max range to really kind of isolate where those things are happening. And a little bit of a blur just to soften that out, soften the borders of it. I use that once again, using the same results as the other one to create, you know, a softening region, an area that it's going to soften out. It's kind of broken up. And that's sort of the, uh, the, the ground, the, uh, you know, the, the softer ranges where the, um, sediment will have gone and then the you know the flows of water down uh, the the earth will have kind of started to create this river region so once again same deal uh duration uh this time i didn't push push the intensity but i could but i did kind of like sort of the shapes and again uh, unlike the other one which was very specific it just kind of went in sort of like a straight line through this one was really flowing with the terrain and so um, it flattening off certain regions and certain areas kind of maintaining felt a little bit better to me so rather than just carving the whole thing out all i did was i just took this snowfall fall element and i kind of extracted it so i extracted it by just taking snowfall and subtracting the non-snowfall version right so this and then subtract the snowfall and what it's going to give me is all the snow which i then took and added back to my original so i take that and then add wink and it's going to do the same thing here so now i have this nice little softened semi-flattened region and that works and then i can go ahead and take the wear that was from this which is creating this carve. And I just subtract it from this one. I'm just subtracting about 31%. And I could subtract more, but again, uh, keep in mind that's gonna carve away a good chunk of your, your terrain. And if you wanted, you could go ahead and just did a little blur and height to the, uh, the flow here, and that will isolate that. So you could go ahead and, and play with this as your way of you know, uh, evenly removing from that terrain. Um, I could also probably even use that to subtract. It's got a lot of branching in there. So maybe a little bit of blur and let's see, let's see, let's go and use, we'll, we'll use a uh, aperture and a blur. Mm -mm -mm. A blur right there. So we'll use the flow instead, that, and use a very small amount. And we'll do that. And this one I should contract. There we go. 
It's a nice little terrain. So instead of using the actual wear, I use that. And maybe I could even use a bit of the wear as well. So I could go ahead and subtract the wear on top of that. Just using another combined node. There. Subtract. And now it's using both the flow and that. Maybe I want to use the aperture on that as well. So that to contract again. So we'll stick it on this one. And it's not as soft. So that's the different methods to uh, go about doing this. You can use this for colorization and whatnot as well. Um, but those are the two methods that I can think of just off the top of my head. Uh, I'm sure there's lots of other ways that you could manage this, <clears throat> but that's a river.